All right, good morning. Uh, welcome. I hope everyone is well. Um, happy Tuesday, or whatever day it is that you're watching. So um, I have several of these books, um, and they all come from, well, the Yamas and the Yamas, they come from uh, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. Um, and there's the eight limbs, one of which is the asana practice, which uh, we do today. And the other is the yamas and the yamas. Yamas is restraints, and then the yamas are observances. Um, and they are fun. Uh, sorry, can't read my writing. <laughs> um, I have notes here. Um, they are foundational to all yogic thought. Um, yoga is a system that extends far beyond doing yoga postures. It is literally a way of living. Yoga is designed to bring you more and more awareness of not only your body, but also your thoughts. And within the niyamas, so the observances, um, there's one called santosha, which is contentment. And there's this little excerpt, I'll just read this. Um, so the paradox of not seeking contentment allows us to appreciate what we have. Uh, Swami Rama stated in this way, contentment is falling in love with your life. In the classic Wizard of Oz, which I think most of us are familiar with, uh, Dorothy embarked on a long journey to discover that she had already, that she already had contentment where she was. So santosha or contentment is performing day and night action with pure joy. It is true understanding that there is nothing more than can or does exist than this very moment. When we are purely in the moment, the moment is complete. When we do something in the moment to fulfill an expectation for another moment, we miss the contentment. When action is complete in the moment and the process is enjoyed for the pure joy of the process, action becomes being and be being becomes contentment. A lot of good stuff in there. <laughs> so we'll start in our comfortable seat. And you can close down your eyes, starting to connect with your breath. So we close the eyes to remove the visual sense so we can focus more on the internal senses or the other senses. And take this time and allow yourself to transition from whatever you may have been doing just prior to the start of class. And transition to your mat, to your yoga practice. And observe, witness, Experience your breath, lifting up through your chest, through the crown of your head, the top of your head. And just sit and observe your breath. Attempting to make each inhalation as smooth and equal as each exhalation. And 
participating in your breath, but also allowing your breath to breathe itself. You may leave your hands where they are or bring your hands together into Anjali Mudra, or palms together, heart center. We'll start class with one ohm. So we take a full inhale and exhale out. And inhale once again. Uh, your chest, release your hands, turn out of your chest, and then the prana of your eyes open. And so we'll stay in our sukhasana, so our comfortable seat for a moment. Have to transition from the other to the real side. And then bring your soles the soles of your feet together, knees out to the side, and come into bound angle or Baddha Konasana. So adjust your feet, whether they're going to be further out or closer in. This is a big hip opener and it is the first pose in our practice. So just be aware, um, I'd make sure you modify as need and don't go beyond your limits. Um, so bring your heels in to your comfort level, and then knees out to the side. And think knees extending out and inner thighs towards or beyond your toes. And you can put your uh, hands on your ankles or you can also reach behind you. If you reach behind you, just don't press down too much because you don't want to overextend in your thigh area. So think knees out to the side, feet together, not pressing deeply into each other and thighs towards your toes. And lift up through your chest. And feel free to round forward if you like. So you have that flexibility. But don't lose the strength in your legs. Take a full inhale and exhale out. And then place your right hand just beside you. And without using your hand, bring your knee up towards the center and then extend your leg out in front of you. So kneecap pointed up towards the ceiling. Adjust your left heel so it's more in towards your inner thigh. And then place both hands on the outside of your leg. So kneecap pointing up on this thigh, flex the foot, lift your chest, and then maybe walk your hands forward and out. And you will say hello to your hamstrings, or they will say hello to you. You can also bend that knee. And twist lightly over to the right so your belly is more in line with the top of your thigh. Maybe fold forward, maybe walk your hands towards your feet. Keep your belly toned. Then walk your hands back, lifting your torso upright. Rebend that knee. Lean onto your left hip, and your left hand will come out to your side. And then bring that right foot back behind you. So you're more at a 45 and 45. Both hands surrounding over your left knee. And lift and lengthen first. And then walk forward, bringing your torso down towards your left knee. So your right glute will come off the mat. You can come down to your forearms or you can bring your chest and forehead down to the mat or the floor. And keep a tone in your abdomen and twisting slightly over to the left. Then walk your hands back up, hands behind your hips, and bring that leg back into your bound angle. So 
So soles of your feet together. Again, knees out towards the thighs, so pressing out and the inner thighs towards or beyond your toes. Lift and lengthen, maybe get a little deeper in the pose and maybe round forward slightly. Full inhalation, full exhalation. And lift your torso up, right hand behind your right hip. Bring your left leg out in front, kneecap pointed up. And then adjust so your right heel is more towards your inner thigh there. Both hands surrounding your left leg, flex the foot, bend the knee if need be, and then walk your hands towards your foot. Again, keep your abdomen toned and bring your middle of your belly more towards the top of your left thigh. So it's a slight twist. Keep the tone in both legs. And think extension first in your spine before you round down. So if you choose to bring your forehead towards your shin, make sure you're extending in your spine first and then bring the forehead down. My hamstrings won't let me do that right now. <laughs> And then walk your hands back, lean onto your right hip, bend your left leg and come into your 45, 45 or thereabout. And then both hands surrounding your right knee and lean forward down towards your mat or floor. Keep your belly toned. And take a full inhalation. And exhale, maybe sink closer towards your right thigh, towards your mat. And then inhale, come back to center and bring both knees into center. And then flip over, plant your hands towards the front of your mat. Spread your fingers evenly, index fingers pointed straight ahead, also parallel to enough to each other. Come to your hands and knees, curl your toes under, and we're gonna go into downward facing dog. So keeping your knees bent and keeping your feet as wide as your hips, bring your hips up towards the ceiling. Keeping your knees bent, because this is still early. Maybe you've been practicing already, who knows? Maybe walking your dog, or bending or straightening one knee, and then the next, and slowly working, waking up the backs of our legs, pressing your hands down and forward, armpits away from your mat, and hips up and back, heels down towards the mat. So we have a long down dog. So typically your biceps are towards your ears. Your ears are in between your biceps. Belly button towards your spine, sit bones towards the ceiling. Take a full breath in and exhale out. And inhale, shift forward into plank pose. So plank pose, heels come vertical, legs straight and strong, tailbone tucked down and under, gaze slightly forward, press down through all 10 fingertips and the inner edges of your hands. And then up and back to downward facing dog. Full inhalation and exhale out. And inhale once again, shift forward into plank pose. Hold the plank, keep your gaze forward, keep pressing into the mat. Option to lower your knees here as well. And then up and back again to Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then bend your knees and slowly walk 
your feet up towards your hands. Feet can stay hip width and we're in our half forward fold. So you wanna aim for your hips to be more in line with your heels. You're gonna bring some more weight to the front of your feet, but not losing the weight in your heels. And you can also bend your knees here as well. So Ardha Uttanasana. And then forward fold, bringing your hands down towards your feet and your forehead down towards your shin. And then bend your knees, place your hands to your hips, elbows pointed up, and slowly come up to Tadasana. All right. So tone thighs, tighten kneecaps, tone your glutes and your tailbone down towards your heels, belly button towards your spine, lift your chest, and gaze up so your chin is vertical or your chin is parallel to the floor. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Lift your arms overhead, point your palms in, so straight arms. Grab your left wrist with your right hand, reach up and extend up, and then bring your torso to the right, hips towards the left. Keep rooting down through your feet, the inner edge of your feet, Keep your thighs toned, abdomen toned, lift your chin out of your chest, maybe gently pull with your right hand, being as sideways as possible. Come back to center and switch. So grab your right wrist with your left hand, reach up, and then torso to the left, hips to the right, Again, being as sideways as possible. So maybe bringing your right shoulder back behind you slightly, lifting your chin out of your chest, and then come back through center, palms together through the center. So if you have a block, it might come in handy in a little while. If not, that's fine. And the playlist, I forgot to say, I was doing pure space today. If you wanna listen along, I do on Spotify. Okay, so at the front of your mat, bring your feet hip width, hands to your hips. We're going to go into warrior one. So lift your chest and then giant step back with your left foot. So you're going to go about three quarters of the way of your mat. Keep your chest and your hips facing forward. Your back foot should be at an angle. So your left big toe is pointed towards the left side of your mat. So straight and strengthen your legs, squeezing your right hip, left inner thigh together, belly button towards your spine, and then lift your chest. Lift your arms overhead, pointing your palms in, closing your fingers, and then bend your right knee and come into your Vajrasana one. You may have to adjust your stance. So right thigh towards parallel, Squeezing your feet down and apart, as well as down and towards each other. Back legs straight and strong. You choose to gaze up or out in front. And take a full breath in. And as you exhale, bring your arms out to the side. So bending your elbows, bringing your chest forward. And inhale, reach up. Exhale, bringing your elbows out to the side, bring your chest forward, just like cactus arms. Inhale, reach up. One more time, exhale, out to the side. And then bring your hands back behind your hips and interlace your hands. Two options, you can make the U shape with your hands or bring your palms towards each other. Palms towards each other is gonna give you more opening in your shoulders. And then lean your torso forward towards your right thigh, maybe keeping your elbows bent, maybe working your arms towards straight. 
Option to bring your forehead down towards your mat and arms up towards the ceiling. So this is no handed lunge. Be pressing your feet down and towards each other. Belly button is toned, belly button is, belly button is toned. Belly button towards your spine, so tone your abdomen. I love the word sometimes. I know what I want to say. And then bring your torso upright. Step forward with your left and come into Tadasana. All right. Feet hip width apart again. Hands to your hips. Take a giant step back with your right foot. Again, angling your right foot in sharply. So your right toes coming or pointing towards the right corner of your mat. Hips, chest forward. Again, engage your belly, lift your chest, lift your arms overhead, and then sink into your zero one. So left knee is bent, left thigh towards parallel, Squeeze your left glute and right inner thigh towards each other. Adjust your stance if you need to. Palms can be together or shoulder width apart. Gaze up or down. And then inhale. And as you exhale, bring your arms out to the side, so bend elbows. Inhale, reach up. Exhale out to the side. Stay in your lunge. And inhale, reach up. One more time. Exhale out to the side. And then reach back and interlace your hands behind your hips. Again, keeping your elbows bent or working your out arms towards straight, bringing your torso down towards your left thigh. So your left shoulder is going to be uh, touching your left knee. Maybe bringing your forehead down towards the mat. So you don't lose the strength in your back leg because a lot of weight is gonna transfer to your front. Maybe bringing your arms up towards the ceiling. So this is an opening in the chest, opening in the shoulders, Keep your belly toned and then bring your torso upright and step forward, releasing your hands by your side. Okay. Inhale, reach up and exhale, forward fold. Step back into downward facing dog. Again, make sure your fingers are spread evenly. Index fingers pointing straight ahead. Armpits lift away from your mat. Hips up and back. Pressing your hands down and forward. Feet down and back. And then lower down to your hands and knees. Bringing your wrists under your shoulders. Knees under hips. Tops the feet on the floor. And then inhale. And as you exhale, round your back like a Halloween cat, bringing your belly button towards your spine, chin towards your chest. And inhale, reverse the movement into cow. So belly button towards the mat, sit bones towards the ceiling chin out of your chest. Keep pressing your hands down and towards your knees when you come into cow pose. And when you come into cat pose, hands down and forward. All the while pressing your knees into your mat, squeezing your legs towards each other. Continue with your breath. Between Bittalasana, Marjorasana, cow, cat. And then come to a neutral spine and walk your left hand, but a hand foot forward. 
And then right hand come to the tippy fingers, tippy fingers, the tips of your fingers. Shoot your right leg back behind you. You may have to adjust your left leg for a little balance. And then twist open across your chest, reaching your right arm towards the ceiling. So press into your left hand into the mat. Option to stay here or lift your back leg straight, parallel to the floor. Stand back. And then come back to your hands and knees. Knees under your hips. And then walk your right hand forward, about a handprint. Around. And then cup your left hand so you're on your fingertips. Bring your left leg back behind you and then open across your chest, lifting or reaching up with your left arm. Make sure you're not collapsing in your right shoulder and you're pressing the floor away from you there. And then option to bring your left leg parallel to the floor. Extend that leg back, maybe open slightly across your chest more, and then come back to hands and knees and have a seat on your feet. So bringing your legs towards each other, lift your chest, belly button towards your spine, interlace your hands all the way to the webbing, flip your palms away from you. And then lift up, stretch up, palms towards the ceiling, arms straight, chin out of chest, reach up a little bit more, and then release. And take a moment. And then come back into your hands and knees. So again, knees under your hips, and we're going to do the variation of East Age one more time. So left hand forward, about a hand print. Right leg comes back behind you, come up on your right fingertips, and then open across your chest. So reaching up with your right hand, and then again, option to stay there or bring your right leg parallel to the floor. Maybe flex that right foot and bend the knee. Maybe reach back with your right hand, grabbing your foot. Maybe kicking back with that right. So you're trying to keep your right thigh in line with your right hip and then kicking back there. Pressing your chest forward, maybe gazing up, really grip the floor with your left hand, press into that left arm and then release and come back to hands and knees. Very good, one more side, right hand forward about a hand print. I'll stay in this angle, left leg back behind you, cup your left fingers and then open across your chest, reaching your left arm up. So from here, left leg comes up, maybe flex the foot, bend, that knee, keeping your hip in line with your thigh, maybe reaching back, grabbing your foot, maybe pressing your foot and your hand together and opening across your chest. Release and be careful because that's spring loaded and then come back to your hands and knees. Very good. Come into downward facing dog. Hands towards the front of your mat, hands down and forward, feet down and back. I always do down dog with feet about hip width apart. You can also bring your feet together. I find that's a little bit more uh, opening in the back, uh, lower back or hips. And then lift your right leg up behind you. You can just lift it parallel or lift higher, opening in your hip, maybe bending 
or flexing that foot and bending that knee and opening the, the hip completely. So your right leg is at a 45 or 90 degree angle. Keep pressing your hands down and forward, trying to keep your shoulders more in line with each other. Bring that leg back behind you and then shift forward, stepping your right foot between your hands. So you're in a lunge position with your shin vertical, front thigh towards parallel, lift your chest. From here, you're gonna windmill your arms up and come into warrior two. So warrior two, back heel, it's the widest part of your foot, front thigh towards parallel, Press your feet down and apart. Lift your arms parallel. Keep your shoulders stacked more in line with your hips. So instead of twisting your body to look, keep your shoulders, your chest, hips there, and just turn your head gazing over your right fingertips. Look down at your right foot and make sure you can see your first three toes or four toes. So bringing your right knee out to the right slightly. And don't forget to breathe. And then cartwheel your arms down and step back into downward facing dog. And take a full breath there. And exhale out. And then kick your left leg back behind you. And keep it parallel to the floor or open and kick a little higher. Flex that foot, bend the knee, opening in the hip. The tendency is to drop your right shoulder, but try to keep your right shoulder up slightly higher so your shoulders are more in line. And then straighten that leg behind you, shift forward, stepping your left foot between your hands. You're in your high lunge, chest forward. And then you're gonna pivot your back heel down, windmill your arms up and come into your warrior pose. So again, arms to parallel, I'm having a hair issue. <laughs> Shoulders stacked over your hips. Press your feet down and apart. Tuck your tailbone under. Make sure you can see your first three to four toes. Left knee out to the side. Gaze over your left fingertips. And stay in your pose. Soften your face. And from here, windmill your arms down so your back heel comes vertical. Step forward with your right to meet your left and come up into Mastrasana. Okay. Inhale, reach up. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha to Uttanasana. So hands can come to your shins or out in front, flat back, gaze forward. And then as you exhale, forward fold and step back into plank position. So top of a push up, hands pressing down and towards each other and dragging them back towards your feet. Legs straight and strong. Option again to lower your knees down. Option to do push ups if you'd like. If I do push ups, I usually drop my knees, keeping your elbows in towards the side of your torso, belly button towards your spine, and then lower all the way down to your belly. Okay. Arms alongside your torso. Your forehead will come to your mat. Palms facing up. 
One at a time, lift your legs and lengthen your legs back behind you. So you're creating a little bit more space in your spine and your legs. Lift your head, lift your chest. Shoulders come towards each other on your spine and then down your back and then lift everything off your mat, except for your hips and come into Lotus Pose, Shalabhasana. Keeping your legs straight, so you're lifting from the back of your thighs versus your feet. Keep breathing. An option to come out at any time or bend your elbows and come back into Cactus Pose. Option, bring your arms out in front. Stay lifted, back to Cactus. And then place your hands down, propping yourself up into Sphinx Pose. And take a breath. So elbows are more in line with your shoulders or under your shoulders, bringing your chest through to your hands. Again, extending your legs back and keeping your chin out of your chest. So we're gonna go into half frog, which is art of the kasana. So left arm, bringing your forearm more parallel with the front of your mat. Again, you can adjust your arm and try to keep the uh, left shoulder from collapsing. You can make sure you keep lifting up through the chest, pressing down through that arm. You're gonna bring your right arm out to the right and shift some weight onto your left hip. Bend your right knee, reach back, either grab the pinky toe edge or the big toe edge. I prefer the big toe edge. For classical form, it's more big toe edge. And from here, you're bringing your heel towards your hip. So keeping the lift in your chest, the left leg straight and strong, pressing down into your mat, lifting the left kneecap off the mat and keeping your hips more level on your mat. So if you want to twist your arms so your right elbow comes up, you make kind of the U shape and grab your big toe and then twist your fingers over your toes, pointing your right elbow up towards the ceiling. Gaze forward. And then release that leg, bringing the right hand down, right forearm, replacing the left. You guys are doing great. <laughs> I just know it, even though I can't see you. And then lifting in the chest, leaning slight weight or rolling onto the right side and then bending your left leg. You maybe reach back, grabbing the big toe edge of your foot. Again, if you wanna do the clasp, Make a U-shape with your hands, and then wrap your fingers around your toes, bringing the left elbow towards the ceiling. Keep pressing in the right, into the right arm, lifting your chest, and also trying to keep your knees squeezing towards the midline. So you don't want your left knee to roll out to the left. Frogs make this so easy. And then release that back leg and flip over onto your back, bending your knees, and taking a moment. A few deep breaths. And then Bring your toes towards the ceiling. So straight legs, squeezing your legs towards each other. Yes, we know where we're going. So option to keep your chest and your shoulders down to your mat or bring your palms together. So bringing them all the way together, straight arms, reaching towards your toes. So lift your chest and lift your head off your mat. Keep reaching towards your toes. And as you bring your palms, so your right arm outside your left thigh, 
You're gonna drop your right leg down to a hover. Keep reaching and pressing your right arm into your left thigh, lifting your left shoulder off your mat. Keep extending out. Keep breathing. And then bring your right leg up, reach towards your toes, arms out to the right, dropping your left leg down to a hover, squeezing your right thigh towards your left forearm, lifting your right shoulder up off your mat. Keep extending out through your toes, come back through center. Again, hands to the left, drop your right leg to a hover. Maybe smile. <laughs> right leg up, left leg to a hover as you drop your hands over to the right. Keep extending out, squeeze, left forearm, right thigh, come back through center, and relax for a moment. All right. And Come over to your side, plant your hands, and flip over into downward facing dog. So momentarily pressing your hands down and forward, feet down and back, sit bones towards the ceiling, and then gaze between your hands, walk, hop, float, fly, whatever, to the front of your mat. Gaze up, hands to your hips, elbows up towards the ceiling, and Come on up. Okay, so block. You have a block, grab it. And let's see, we'll put it to the front of our mat. I'll have to face forward momentarily. Okay, so hands to your hips. So trying not to use your hands, we're gonna balance on your right leg. Lift your left knee up. Keep that foot flexed and then rotate your left knee out to the side. So you're doing a lot of the work in your upper leg muscles and your hip. Versus if you grab your foot, a lot of the time you're just gonna rotate and move your foot. So leg out to the side, and then you can bring your left hand on the inside of your left knee, grab your ankle, and place that foot into tree pose. So left heel at the root of your inner thigh, right inner thigh, Press your foot and your thigh together, knee out to the side, lift your chest, hands together at heart center. So you can also work with your foot down towards your mat, so your toes on your mat. Always avoid your knee joint, knees don't move laterally. So from here, take a few deep breaths, pressing your foot thigh together, rooting down through your standing leg, rising up through your chest, through your spine, through the top of your head. And then bring that knee towards the front and step back with that left foot, keeping your chest and hips squared forward, but both legs straight and strong, squeezing your right glute, left inner thigh towards each other, Bending at the waist, bringing your torso to parallel. So you're extending through your chest. And from here, we place our block to the right, outside of our right foot. At the highest setting or whatever setting you choose, we're gonna go into Ardha Chandrasana or half moon. So bend your right knee, come to the tippy toes of your left foot, adjust your block so your right hand comes to your block just a few footprints in front of your right foot and pressing into your block in your right foot. Maybe lift your left leg to parallel. Maybe open, stacking your hips more, extending through your left leg. Keep your right toes pointed towards the front of your mat. Open across your chest, maybe lift your top arm. Option again, stay here or come into Ardha Chandra Chapasana, which is bending your back leg, maybe grabbing the pinky toe edge. So to grab my foot, I bend my standing leg and bring it in and then 
extend it out and back. So similar to what we did earlier, keeping your hip in line with your thigh, maybe opening across your chest, and then releasing that leg and bringing your feet together, slowly stand up. Okay, so block comes to the left side. And take a breath. And then standing on your left foot. Okay, without your hands again, lift your right leg up. So right leg parallel to the floor. So this is a lot of belly muscle engagement here. And then right knee out to the side. Then you can use your hand, grabbing that ankle, facing the heel, the root of your inner thigh, wobbling. And then bringing your hands together and press your foot and your thigh together. Try to keep your hips level so you're not dumping into your standing leg. Lift your chest, take a few breaths. So when we go into Ardha Chandrasana or half moon or half moon flow, it's really important to have your focus or your drishti. So once you look at something that's moving, you have a tendency to fall out. So from here, bring your right knee towards the front and then step back with your right foot. Keep your chest and hips squared together. Straighten, strengthen your legs and then bend at your waist bringing your torso towards parallel. Extend through your chest. Again, option to stay here or you can place your hand down to your block. You can also place your hand to your floor if that's in your practice. I prefer the block, but the block doesn't make it any easier. It just makes it more accessible. Bend your left knee, come to the tippy toes of your right foot. Press in with your left foot, right left hand, and lift your back leg towards parallel, maybe opening across that hip. Maybe bringing your top arm towards the ceiling. So again, stay here or keep one focal point or drishti. Bend that back knee, maybe bend your standing leg, grab your foot. Bring your heel towards your glute and then extend back behind you. So you're kicking your foot in your hand, but also pulling with your foot gently. It's a big opening across your chest. And then release that leg and come back to standing. All right, very good. Put your arms overhead, point your palms in. Sit back and down into your power pose. Squeeze your knees towards each other. Lift your chest, gaze forward. And then maybe without using your hands, have a seat on your bum and lift your shins to parallel. So you have a bent knee, shins parallel to the floor, arms out to your side, Ardha Navasana. Option to stay here or extend your legs straight. Point your toes, lift your chest, belly button towards your spine, and then relax on your back for just a moment. Okay. Take a few deep breaths. And then keeping your left knee bent straight in your right leg, flex the foot, bringing the foot towards the ceiling. Interlace your hands behind your right thigh. So keep your arms straight. So you're pressing your leg away from you, not trying to bring your leg towards you.
Option to straighten your left leg along the mat. Keep pressing your right leg away from you. And if your left leg is straight, re-bend that knee and then bend your right knee, bringing it in closer to your chest and opening across, placing your right ankle to your left knee from your left thigh. And also interlace your hands behind your left thigh, bringing your left knee in towards your chest or option in front of your shin. Keep your feet flexed. Keeping your head and back down to your mat. And release your hands, bring both feet to your mat. And then straighten your left leg up, flex the foot, interlace your hands behind your left thigh, pressing your leg away from you. So again, straight arms, leg away from you and not trying to get your leg towards your forehead. Option to straighten your right leg along the mat. Take a few deep breaths. Rebend your right knee and bend your left knee in towards your chest. Left knee out to the side, bringing your ankle to the top of your right knee. Interlace your hands behind your right thigh or shin, bringing your right knee in towards your chest. Again, keep both feet flexed. Keep your belly toned. And take a few deep breaths. Release your hands, release your feet, back to your mat. Gonna go into bridge pose. So if you bring your hands down beside your hips, you should almost be able to feel the backs of your heels. So about that distance. Uh, knees hip width apart, so your feet will follow. Two options, grab the outer edge of your mat and pull your mat apart. Or when you lift your hips, so if you're grabbing the outer edge of your mat, lift your hips, stay there working with your hands, pulling your mat or interlace your hands behind your hips. Now either way, whichever way you have your hands, one at a time, lift up through your chest, walking one shoulder in towards your spine at a time. So hips up, chin out of your chest, so you're raising your chest to your chin. You never want to overextend your neck. Hips up, chest up, feet pressing down and towards your shoulders, squeezing your thighs in towards the center. Shoulders pressing down, wrists pressing down. Take a few deep breaths. So ultimately, you don't want any part of your spine touching your mat. Full breath in, and as you exhale, release your hips down to your mat, release your hands. And bring your knees in towards your chest for a fine child's pose. Maybe roll side to side. And then release your legs, so legs long, arms overhead for a full body stretch. So extending in opposing directions as if someone was grabbing your ankles, and grabbing your wrists and pulling you, engaging all the muscles in your body. And then exhale, release all the muscles and come into Shavasana. Our final pose. 
legs long on your mat. And let your ankles drop out to the sides. Palms facing up. Close your eyes. Relaxing your body. Smoothing your skin. Relaxing the space between your eyebrows, your eyes, allowing your jaw to gently drop. Relax your chest, your hips, and restore your body, all the movement we just did. And take this time to be in this moment in Shavasana Final Focus. Start to deepen your breath, and bring some awareness back to your body. You're welcome to stay in Shavasana as long as you like, of course, when you're ready. Spend one minute of time and roll to the right. And using the strength of your arms, return to a seated position. Keeping your eyes closed, you place your palms wherever you find comfort. Bring them together in the Anjali Mudra, palms together at heart center, and lift the brightness of your chest, of your heart, into your palms. So all seal clasps with one ohm. Feel free to join in or listen. Full inhalation. And exhale out. Inhale once again. Uh -huh. Feel your chin to your chest. Acknowledge yourself for showing up for your practice, for yourself. And to each one of you, with great respect and this practice. Namaste. Thank you very much for practicing, Annie. Thank you for joining me today and remember. If you have any questions, please let me know and have a wonderful rest of your cloudy day here. Thank you.